Hi, this is Arnav from Scalum. Welcome to yet another episode of Refactor. And today I'm going to be telling you how can you approach take home projects during your interview rounds with companies. Now, take home projects is something you might have heard of or you might have already faced when you're doing interviews and it has become fairly popular with, uh, you know, early to mid stage startups. And these days, even for some larger companies. What is a take home project? Generally, after your first round of interview, or sometimes even, uh, you know, just after your hiring manager or your recruiter has had a first call with you, they might give you a small project, they will give you some requirements what you need to build, and they will give you anywhere between, you know, two days to uh, one week of time and tell you that, okay, uh, you just go uh, and then in your free time, build this project, come and show it to us, uh, submit it via GitHub repository uh, and everything. And we will discuss this project in the next round of the interview. The reason uh, the companies ask you to build take home projects is also because it uh, gives them a very good real world, uh, you know, benchmark that if you are a backend developer, then they have asked you to build an API. So they know that how you build that. Uh, they can ask you to build a mobile app if you are a mobile developer or a you know small visualization project if you are a front end developer right so and it has become very popular because a lot of CTOs and hiring managers they talk about you know uh, I, I get to see that exactly how this person writes code how they handle errors uh, what kind of commit messages they write and then when I talk about the project with them they can't really fake their knowledge I can ask them that why did you pick up uh, an SQL DB in your project why not a no SQL DB and they have to defend their choices or, or if I ask them that, okay, this is a place where you did not handle the error. Why did you not? And you can you can have different answers to it. Maybe I thought that error will not come or maybe I thought that this is a sample project. So, you know, maybe I don't need to handle that error. But anyway, they, they can get to ask you questions about what tech decisions you take when you build a project. Why do you take those decisions? And they can uh, get a better understanding of your uh, depth in knowledge, right? So how do you approach such a take home project? And, and, and just to give you an example of what kind of take home projects I have uh, commonly seen is say, for backends, what I've seen is, okay, uh, build this uh, API for a blogging app or build this API for uh, event ticketing system or, or build a API for flight booking uh, system. Uh, that's very common. Uh, for front ends, what I've seen is like, okay, there is this API we have created, there is a lot of data there, you have to fetch that data and show it in a graph and, and uh, you know, visualize that data. Uh, or, or maybe there is public uh, data government publishes about COVID deaths. So okay, uh, show me a graph of showing uh, COVID deaths for the last one year and you can see year by year, month by month kind of things, right? This uh, kind of thing is, is uh, fairly common. On mobile apps, what I've seen is, okay, uh, there is some API like, okay, TVDB API is there where you can find data of all TV series. So make an app which on which people can search for TV series and mark their most favorite ones, which they are, uh, you know, in their wish list to watch later. So these are some, some projects that happen. So how should you approach uh, the take home project? I think uh, very first of all is a uh, lot of people don't uh, go through the proper uh, requirement gathering process. So sometimes the problem statement is fairly vague. Sometimes it's deliberately vague. They, they just want you to come up with all sorts of assumptions. Uh, but you should definitely ask whoever gave you the project, like whether it's the hiring manager or the engineer in the last round of interview. Clarify things, whatever that you need to clarify. Like, you know, I don't know, uh, should I add authentication in, in my project, right? Important question to ask. Uh, they might say, no, no, it's okay, you don't need to add. The thing is that it saves you a lot of time when you're building the project on, on doing something that was not required in the first place, right? The next step is, and it's very important before you st even start building the project is time box yourself. Uh, you should know that, you know, we have two days of time or we have seven days of time, whatever time you have. And, and within that, those days as well, you know, you, you will have your office, going to work, maybe going out with friends, whatever. So it's, you'll be doing it in your free time. So how much free time will you really have? Will you have 15 hours? Will you have 20 hours? Uh, figure that out. And then scope out your project. And there's something uh, in tech we call scope creep. So scope creep means that when you start building it and you have not really created a very clear picture that these are things I need to build and these are the things I don't need to build right now. If you don't demarcate that very clearly, when you start building, you might start adding features which were not required and, and the core features of the project might not get finished, right? So you might keep focusing a lot on color theme of the project and using correct fonts and, you know, uh, setting up your CICD pipeline of the project. But maybe they had asked a feature that, okay, the data should be able to be compressed and downloaded and you forgot adding that feature, right? And that brings me to the second point, which is figure out from their requirements, uh, which of the things uh, are required and which of the things are good to have. 
So if you uh, look at, you know, lots of websites like uh, Career Cup and then uh, even on Interview Bit, we have uh, some such option, you know, uh, past projects we have uh, talked about. You will see that uh, wherever some past projects were given by companies, lots of times those docs, uh, some candidates are often shared as well. Glassdoor also will find some interview questions. You'll see that it's very clearly written that uh, they say that these are required parts. These we have to implement. These are good to have. If possible, we can implement these features as well. So make sure that you focus to get the required parts definitely done within the time. And when if you have some free time, right, then only try to attempt the good to have parts of it. Okay. Next uh, comes is like, how do you get started with the project? Something very important is keep in mind that always start with a Git repository. And in my time, I have had at least 200, 300 take home projects I evaluated, maybe more. And the number of times somebody submits a zip folder and it does not contain Git history is way too high, way too high for my comfort. I mean, I'm looking to hire an engineer. They're supposed to work in a team. They're supposed to be using uh, Git and they're supposed to be having a commit history. Why would they submit a zip file with, you know, 100 code uh, files inside that? Why not a Git repository, right? So make a private Git repository, like on GitHub, making a private Git repository is free these days. So go, go to GitHub, Bitbucket, GitLab, wherever you want to go. Go there, make a private Git repository, start making it as if it's an open source project, okay? Name your commits, uh, you know, very thoughtfully. Uh, and don't write uh, feature one done, feature two done, okay, this is working now, all of that stuff. Sometimes people write commits, I've seen commits in take-home projects, submit. why the hell is this not working? I mean, out of frustration, people have written that as a commit message. Don't do that because people are going to be judging those commit messages as well. Like, do you write, you know, well-described commit messages? Um, then inside the code, there are two parts to it. One is just because it's a take-home project, just because it's sort of, you know, supposed to be built in a short period of time, uh, there is still no scope for untidy work. There is no scope for, uh, you know, not naming your variables correctly, right? Naming your variables like IJKL, uh, like you do in, like sometimes in competitive programming. There is no scope of error on that side. You know, you maybe your code is not indented properly, or maybe you have written all the code inside a single file. Those things are, nobody's gonna tolerate that from a software engineer because then people assume that, okay, if, if given a time constraint, if you write like this, then at work, there would be time constraints at time. There would be, you know, war room situations where you have to fix a bug quickly at time. So whenever you're under pressure, you will write bad code. And good code is something you put effort for. It shouldn't be the case. As a good engineer, good code should always come out of your hands. Like, you know, naming of a class should be with a capital letter, naming of a function with, with a small letter. It's standard Java, JavaScript kind of terminology I'm talking about. It might be different in different languages. But these things shouldn't just go away just because you're doing it as a small side project. Like, I don't need to write tidy code because a side project is not a good argument, okay? But also don't do over-engineering. And what does over-engineering mean that maybe, okay, I, I have a data layer and I have a API layer and between that I create a adapter and a converter and a modulator, all of that stuff. Maybe that is not required, right? Maybe, you know, uh, if you have only five services in your project versus like in a production project, you have 20 services. Don't, don't go and try to do something like, you know, uh, implement a dependency injection framework. Don't do that over engineering. Then that is also something, especially at startups when hiring, is considered a little negative that this person always writes code like a big tech company with billions of users. They can't write concise code without over engineering it. Okay. Then uh, the final part is like the presentation of the project also. And then when somebody is looking at it, what are the final things they will be looking at is if it's a backend project, dockerize it at least. Okay. Make a Docker container so that it, it uh, can be deployed quickly. Can it also be deployed? I think the, the first question, because a lot of times I've seen projects which have been submitted, which if you just git clone and try to run, it does not run, it crashes. So it means the person did not actually run the project after their final code push. It's a huge red flag. Like I will never go ahead with a candidate like that because you know, there needs to be a bit of ownership and a responsibility to the project that you're submitting. You can't submit something which is not actually working, right? So dockerize it and probably if possible, like maybe take a, quick digital ocean or a small AWS instance and then deploy that project and send the IP address also to, to the interviewer that, hey, I've deployed this project. You can check out the API here, right? And there are services like Heroku and render.com and Netlify and then so many all where you can actually freely deploy a project as well. It's easy to do that. So do that. Similarly with frontend as well, like just GitHub pages also you can deploy it to, right? 
why why send somebody a bunch of you know js files html files and css files when you can actually deploy it and you can send them a url similarly with an app like send an apk or ipa file to the person why send them source code that they need to compile they will not compile and see that's the thing but if you send them an app they will actually open it and see how it works right if you are in front end mobile uh, development or web development front end then uh, your aesthetic senses do get judged a bit and you know something that looks very ugly uh, you know using bad uh, font choices or very you know jarring colors uh makes a bad impression because it tells people that okay while you work in a team maybe the designer would be doing all of that stuff uh, and then you would be just implementing the design but still as a front end developer good eye for design good aesthetic sense is something that is required because still you know sometimes there would be some judgment calls in in corner cases of the ui which as a developer you take and the designer did not design that case how do you go about doing that do you stay on the brand do you use good colors do you use good font choices people do judge that a little bit it's not a most of a make or break thing but people do and my best tip for that is like if you are doing mobile development on android or so use google's material design library as it is don't don't try to you know be over smart with design there similarly with web development there are very good libraries like there is bootstrap or balma just just pick that up and use that don't try to you know style it yourself unless they have provided you with some you know style files uh, that you can use right and the final thing is that uh, and and i look at that in projects a lot and i've asked a lot of people who actually judge uh, projects is there will be a lot of things that you haven't been able to build in the given time or there would be uh, places where there is some error that's coming but you have not handled that error because handling that would take a lot of time right but it's a very corner case so drop a lot of to do comments inside your project like you know just to do here an error comes in actual production we have to solve it to do here the token is saved in memory in actual production we should put it in a database to do comment uh, we should extract this function out into a separate class write a lot of to do comments it tells the person who is going to look at your project that although you had only two days to work on this project but you still have the vision that if you take this project to completion if you take it to production you know which are the gaps which you have written it like a side project but if you actually productionize it you will actually fix those gaps those to do comments are very important and not just to do comments your rest of the documentation as well and and one thing is like don't over document also like there is a function called add which adds two numbers and on top of that function you write a comment which says this is a function that adds two numbers that's not needed like that's just too much verbosity right what you rather need is wherever uh, you need to add some additional context which is not visible by looking at the code that why this code is like this or you know uh, why this this uh, we are not using an internal function and we have created our own function maybe you have created a password hashing function yourself rather than using the default one uh, right why have you done that so write a comment about that so the comment should answer the why's and not the how's a lot because the how can be seen by looking at the code in front of it right so that's pretty much it if you follow these steps uh, and submit a project you should should be good to go at least in, uh, the project would definitely appreciate it to be able to you know do all of these things in the given time and and sort of excel in projects one thing is very important that you need to practice very simple like you know data structures algorithms questions uh, they come in, in interviews and people say that what's the only solution to it you, you need to go and practice right you people tell you that you no know, go to lead code solve five questions every day do it for six months very same with projects it's not different right and then with anything in life in fact so you want to submit a project and you want to do it all of these things you want to make it tidy you want to have uh, good engineering practices you want to have good commits in it you you want to have it containerized dockerized deployed you you want to be able to write to do comments it's it's hard to remember all of these things when you actually some company dream company have applied to they have given you a project you have two days to do so practice create a bunch of projects pick up a very small ideas i think one thing i can suggest you do is go to google search github project ideas just these three words github project ideas you will see there are a lot of repositories where some people have in the readme file they have jotted down some 100 200 project ideas that these are some projects you can build pick up any of those ideas most of them are you know of the kind of scope which you can build in one week of time so go ahead you know build those things and develop the ability to quickly build a side project within a week as well so that you are ready for whenever you next time go out an interview and the side project comes your way you can build it okay 
If you really liked uh, all of this, if this helped you, then uh, please do subscribe to Scalar's YouTube channel. And we will be covering more such uh, topics on how to prepare for uh, interviews, how to build projects and everything uh, in future in our channel as well. So please do subscribe. Thank you for watching.